Hello and welcome to tonight's uh, SBC News. The Ministry of Health has relaxed and removed uh, most of the measures that were in place due to COVID-19. The decision approved by the Platinum Committee is due to the continuous decrease in active cases and the infection rate of COVID-19. We've presented recommendations to Platinum uh, Committee and uh, we have agreed on the following measures to be relaxed or to be removed. So as of tomorrow, uh, schools can open to full capacity. Uh, there will not be any opening hours, opening limit on the time of opening. However, the, all businesses have certain conditions for selling of alcohol uh, that's under a licensing SLE law. This remains. Okay. They have to respect the sale of alcohol regulations. Uh, informal family gatherings are permitted, and we are publishing guidance on how to have safe family gathering. Uh, gathering indoors are allowed according to the venue, meetings, conference, seminars, workshops, AGM. Uh, there will not be any movement restrictions as of tomorrow. Uh, for funeral, the number was 25. Uh, you can have funeral with, with, with 25 close family members. It's been extended to 50. There will not be any restrictions on opening of bars, casinos, restaurants. They, will be, they, are, they are free to open as, um, as they wish. Discotheques and, and, and open dancing are not something that, we are, uh, that is allowed. So a restaurant or a casino cannot be turned into a, a show room and, and, and people start dancing and, inter, and intermingling. Uh, wedding reception, as per venue SOP. This is for wedding receptions, graduation, any other celebrations is as per the venue SOP. The wearing of face masks will remain um, as per current regulations. To date, there have been uh, over 39,400 uh, cases uh, in Seychelles, 163 deaths have been recorded, and there are currently 317 active cases in the country. It has now been a tradition since President Weval Kalawan, who is also a priest, took office to hold moments of prayers at State House. This time, President Ramkalawan paid tribute to victims of the COVID-19 pandemic. It was also to give thanks for all the health workers and others who have been on the front line. The session was led by moments of reflections by members of the different religious groups. To start the session, the First Lady, Linda Ramkalawan, accompanied by two children, lit three candles in memory of the more than 100 people who lost their lives to the virus. The Public Health Commissioner, Dr. Jugenio, also reflected on the two years living in a pandemic, which he said had been challenging and life-changing, especially for health workers. There were also gospel performances to liven up the moment. A 69-year-old woman of La Misere was found lifeless in her room this morning, presumed to have died by hanging. The police has in a press release said she was found by her daughter this morning as she passed by her room. According to police, her daughter said that the last time she saw her mother alive was after the telenovela last night. The police was informed of the incident by a family member around 7.30 this morning while pathologists certified her death at 8.45. The police has opened an investigation into the incident while awaiting an autopsy result which will also establish whether or not there has been any foul play in the event of her death. In two cases involving the death of two people, Chief Justice uh, Ronnie Govinden has today remanded for another 14 days the couple, a 32-year-old man and a 27-year-old woman, suspects in the death of Hubert Motte from uh, Saint Louis. In the case of the death of a 50-year-old man from uh, Rochecaima, the prosecution has uh, not applied for the 30-year-old suspect from uh, Limamel to be remanded further, so he was released while the investigation continues. Also remanded for another 14 days are accused Roy Azima and Andrew Estral in the case of uh, illegal possession of explosives. 
The Seychelles Port Authority and the uh, Grand Port Maritime de la Réunion are working in collaboration to establish a smart and green port system project for better service delivery and enhance efficiency between different ports in the region. There was a presentation this morning to launch the two weeks seminar to explain the objective of the project. The smart port system, which is electronic, is aimed at helping with the exchange of information from different ports. The green port system will implement and assure the protection of the environment. The Minister for Transport, Anthony Dejac, says the smart and green port system project will make the operation between the ports in the Indian Ocean region more efficient. There is a need to increase efficiency and productivity a need to prevent unnecessary delays in maritime traffic, a need to improve performance through digitalization, training and growth. This can be achieved through the encouragement of electronic transmissions of information, equipping workforce with the workforce with technology to solve and facilitate movement of goods, delivery of services and smooth operations. Optimizing loading and unloading time leading to fewer emissions, etc. Not only does it allow us to respect the IMO's FAIL convention requirement, it also allows us to move towards a green port concept and become regional and perhaps even global leaders in this space. Why not? It gives me so much pleasure to see how we're sharing and multiplying maritime expertise and, know and knowledge. If we continue to come together to bring different elements, we can and will surely achieve even better and greater heights. On the opening of the National Assembly session last week, Assembly leaders opened up on what uh, they hope to achieve this year. The leader of government business, Bernard Georges, said people need to watch out for some constitutional amendments as part of this year's heavy legislative agenda. The leader of the opposition, who is the chairperson of the Finance and Public Accounts Committee, the FPAC, Sébastien Pillay, said that with a minority representation, it is difficult to initiate an inquiry due to possible government interference in the work of the FAPC, FPAC. Sorry. I am in a minority. I can easily be impeded by government in, in moving towards an investigation. I'm very keen to find out what happened to, to the COVID fund. I will focus on ensuring that government is transparent with figures and that they tell us what exactly they're spending in what area and how much they're spending in, in, in those areas. But uh, in the previous assembly, the chairperson of FPAC, they were minority in the assembly. So what's the difference? In the previous FPAC, yes, the chairman came from the opposition. But um, in that context, government at the time did not interfere with what the FPSC was doing. So Mr. David Pierre, whilst he was the only member, and there's a lot of complaints, of, there's a lot of criticism of Mr. David Pierre, most people do not know what he did try, what he tried to do. When President Ron Calawan was the chairman of the FPSC, he, has a, he had a majority, so he could decide on whatever investigation that his, that the FPSC could do. I don't have that same, that same, uh, that same position. And I find instances whereby government has stopped, the government side has stopped me from moving ahead with an investigation. I don't blame the members. I think this comes from higher up. I think they're being, they're, they're being told what to do. And the danger is that now we're headed back towards having, a, rather than having a multi-party democracy, that we, we're gradually moving back to a one-party state. So are you also considering uh, taking up the CPEC uh, case? Well, the CPEC case is one of the issues that we are going to have to discuss, we are going to have to go through. The impropriety which the minister alleged had occurred is almost close to corruption. So we, 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 we think that there should have been a lot more information, a lot more transparency in how this issue has been dealt with. I don't know, we don't know whether this is, about, this is a matter of a personal nature. If it's a, a clash of personalities, we don't know. We have a, a huge legislative agenda. In fact, transformation is done through legislation, as you know. Most, uh, most things have to be legislated. So we had last year a very heavy legislative agenda. And we're going to have this year an equally heavy legislative agenda, uh, including occasionally uh, having to suspend the standing orders. I would like at some point for the National Assembly uh, to do National Assembly work rather than just legislative work on behalf of the executive. 
I would like there to be space for more motions, especially. Uh, so, because that is where the assembly is the assembly. Questions everybody can ask. Legislation, well, it's legislation. But motions is where members of the National Assembly can come into their own, can develop themes, can come up with ideas, can express themselves, can bring forward stuff from their, uh, from their constituencies. Uh, all of that I, uh, I would like to see more of. So as far as possible, we're going to work fast through the legislation in order to leave the space for motions for, for members. Anything in particular top on your agenda? No, absolutely nothing. Uh, I have to do the government business, that is my job, so uh, I'm taken up with mostly uh, legislation. There will be some constitutional amendments, I think that is what we need to look out for, uh, but they won't, come to the they won't come to the Assembly before there has been public consultation. So I think that is the thing to look forward to this year. And those are our main stories so far this Monday evening. Join us again at uh, 8. Bye for now.